Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This will be my last video for this chapter, also my shortest video for this chapter. We're gonna work out a single example where we integrate over a parallelogram. All right guys, so in this example, we have a region R that's given by the par parallelogram that you see on the screen. And we're trying to compute the double integral of e to the y over that region R. Now, um, we can just spend a little time with Algebra 1 skills here and find four lines that describe the four sides of our parallelogram. Um, and you can see the two blue equations describe our two blue lines that are parallel to each other. Same thing for the red ones, they're parallel to each other, hence a parallelogram. Now what I can do is say, eh, I'm gonna do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here. For example, I'm gonna take my y equals x plus one, and I'm gonna get y minus x on the right side and one on the left side. Likewise, I can take y equals x minus four and rewrite that as negative four equals y minus x. And in a similar fashion, I can move the x's and y's to one side for my pair of red equations as well, my, my, parallel, my red parallel lines. I have one fourth x plus y, is equal to, and then I have two different constants, 13 fourths and six. All right, the reason that you might be interested in doing this is now we could define um, a change of variables here. So we can let u equal y minus x and v equal one fourth x plus y. And what you'll notice is like, oh, look, look what's going on with u here. Look what's happening with u equals y minus x. Well, u goes from one or from negative four to one. Uh, similarly, we can look at V. That means that V goes from 13 fourths to six. So I have um, a change of variables and I also know what the limits of integration are gonna be when I switch my integral over to an integral in UV space. Now, the only thing that went kind of strangely here is in all of our previous examples, we didn't write u as a function of x and y and v as a function of x and y. We typically had x as a function of u and v and y as a function of u and v. This is a little bit backwards from what we would have expected in a, in a previous example. Um, basically, to compute our integral, we need the map to go from uv space into xy space so that we can compute our Jacobian determinant, our area conversion factor. Um, so we have u of xy and v of xy, but we need x of uv and y of uv. And Mathematica really can come to the rescue here and make this a very, very quick calculation. Uh, here's the syntax that you would plug into Mathematica. Um, basically, take u of xy equals u and v of xy equals v and solve that system of equations for x and y. And there it is. We're just taking the information we already have and just transforming it appropriately to get x as a function of u and v and y as a function of u and v. Now in your triad problems, that's gonna do the trick. Um, you're gonna need to know how to do this by hand. So let's take a quick look. Basically, when you're working on a quiz or a test, if you don't have access to a calculator or if you don't have uh, access to Mathematica, you're gonna have to know how to do that solve command um, as an actual process that you can compute yourself. The good news is it's an algebra one skill, um, not a calculus skill. So guys, why don't we try it out? Um, so what I'm gonna do here is try to set up either elimination or substitution. So I've got u equals, you know, I'm gonna write this as y minus x, but this other one, I'm gonna multiply by negative one and distribute that technically multiplying both sides of the equation by negative one, but um, I have negative V equals negative Y minus one fourth X. And yeah, that works out pretty nicely. I have U minus V on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the Y minus Y cancels. And then I just have negative five fourths X. And uh, oh, I guess I just multiply both sides of the equation by negative four fifths. So I have X is equal to negative four fifths U minus V. 
Um, now you could do the same process again, but instead of eliminating y's like I did right here, pick something else to multiply and try to eliminate x's. I'm gonna leave that for you. So go ahead and pause the video and you can give that a try and see if you can get y is equal to 1 fifth u plus 4v. Um, but it's just you know a, a simple um, elimination problem that you would have seen in an Algebra 1 class. All right, so now that we have x as a function of u and v and y as a function of u and v, we need our area conversion factor, our Jacobian determinant. We just have to compute a couple partial derivatives. The nice thing here is that um, x of uv and y of uv, uh, we have linear equations on the right-hand side. So when we start taking some partial derivatives, we just really get a bunch of constants here. So for example, let's look at dx du. dx du is the partial derivative of negative four-fifths u minus v with respect to u. Well, the partial derivative of u is one, and the partial derivative of v with respect to u is zero. So there's a one here and a zero here. And so we're just left with negative four-fifths. You could do that for all four entries in this matrix. And then we can compute our two by two determinant and we get negative four fifths. Um, now this is the first time we've seen this happen. It doesn't mean that we did the problem incorrectly. Uh, there is a meaning to that negative four fifths. We'll look at it on a later slide. But for our purposes, when we're computing our double integral, we need to use positive four fifths. We need to use the absolute value of negative four fifths. The idea being that the area of a small parallelogram is uh, going to be a positive, positive value. Remember in our previous video, our first video in this series, um, we were figuring out how to map between coordinate spaces and we were estimating areas using small, tiny, little microscopic parallelograms. Well, area is a positive quantity, so we need to use a positive value in our double integral. Now you guys saw this in the previous video, but just to remind you again, there is a cool pattern that you can find emerging in your Jacobian matrix here. The first row is the gradient of X as a function of U and V, and the second row is the gradient of Y, where Y is treated as a function of U and V. So um, if you ever forget the formula for the area conversion factor, you just have to remember that you need the gradient of the first coordinate of your transformation as your first row and the gradient of the second coordinate of your transformation as your second row and you should be good to go there all right so here's what i put together for you as a just a, a little bit of a primer on why it's okay for our area conversion factor to come out as a negative quantity, negative four fifths. Now, when we're integrating, we're going to use positive four fifths, but this negative really is here. And you can see what's happening. Um, look at as we're moving between uh, UV space and XY space. It almost looks like that piece of area is being reflected. And that's true. Uh, that negative sign is, is indicative of a reflection between UV space and XY space. So, um, then if basically if I were to kind of um, put a coloring onto these gray regions here, um, the gray rectangle in UV space and the gray rectangle in XY space, I actually now wish I kind of did this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of imagining that we had like a kind of a neat gradient, no pun intended, from like one side to the other. You know, maybe where it's like smoothly changing colors from one side to the other. What you would notice is that coloring would be reflected between UV space and XY space. And you can see that in the animation that is, uh, that's going on the screen as well. Anyway, um, so the negative sign in our area conversion factor tells us that the region in XY space and UV space are mirror images of each other. There's a reflection happening there. Um, and there is also a meaning to the number four fifth as well. The four fifths, so we, we, now we know what the negative means. Um, what about the four fifths part of it? The four fifths tells us that our XY parallelograms are four fifths of the area of our UV rectangles. It's an adjustment factor that's adjusting for us having different, different amounts of area in UV space compared to when we can map into XY space. And because our area conversion factor here is a constant, we can get a, a really nice idea of, of exactly what's happening 
because you can see all of these little parallelograms in our graph paper here in, uh, in XY space look like each individual one looks like it's about 80% the size of one of the rectangles in UV space. And that's because that's exactly what's happening here. All right, so now I have all of the pieces that I need. I've got my area conversion factor, the absolute value of which is four fifths. I've got my X of UV and my Y of UV. Um, I have my limits of integration from my parameterization there. And so now it's time to just put everything into my double integral. It's a double integral I don't really want to compute in XY space, but now I have enough information to move over and do this computation in UV space. Now, uh, you can see at the top of the slide here, I mentioned this is a Mathematica-aided change of variables. Um, that's because I used Mathematica before to uh, solve for X of UV and Y of UV, but also um, this integrand here would be best handled using your uh, using Casil, using Mathematica. So we get 417.1 um, using Mathematica there. I'm not saying that you can't compute this using other methods, but um, this is kind of a primer for some triad problems that you're going to see. So in this case, um, instead of giving you a problem that I want you to number crunch, um, we're setting this up and then we're completing the rest of the problem using Mathematica here. And finally, guys, I'm going to leave you with uh, the same slide that I finished my previous video with, which is I just want to remind you that the big idea that I want you leaving this chapter with is that if you can parameterize a region, you could probably integrate over it. All right, guys, thanks for watching all three of these videos, and good luck on your homework.